Good evening, everybody. Hope you all had a wonderful day today. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Um, just thank God for another opportunity to get into the Word of God and study a little bit about the end times. Um, we serve a God who has told us what's going to happen before it happens. 25 to 30 percent of the Bible's prophecy. He's batting a thousand and we're studying about that final seven year period period into the millennial kingdom into all eternity. And we know that, you know, the way things are moving, we are moving um, at a rapid pace. Everything's converging all at once. And we know that we are going to enter into that final seven year period um, very, very soon. So, but thank God for the word. God has told us everything we need to know. And we're studying about the churches, the letters to the churches, the seven churches. And we know that the, the letters were for that day. And we even look at the letters. We look at those churches as, um, um, you know, categories that we as believers, as born-again believers, fall into. We fall into either one of the, you know, one of the seven churches. We fall into one of those categories um, all the time. So we can look at this, and we also believe, I believe, that the Bible teaches that these letters are also for the final seven years of this age. And, you know, whether you, um, even if you, whether you believe that pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, whatever your position is on the timing of the resurrection and rapture, um, we always, we know that the, the pre-trib camp looks at Revelations 3.10 as the, um, the rapture, the church that goes in the rapture, and I believe that the letters to all the churches apply to the end time, to the body of Christ in the final seven years. So we're kind of going through here, studying this. We're comparing it to the the churches and the seals, and also the Olivet Discourse in chapter 24 of Matthew, because I believe there's parallels in there that let us know that this is also for the end times, the last seven years. So we're going to continue to read. We left off in um, chapter two where this letter is to the uh, church of Smyrna. So we, we did Ephesus in our last study, and we saw the parallels between church one and seal one and, um, you know, deception, false messiahs false Christ, false disciples and apostles, false prophets. And so we saw that in there. And today we're going to study the message to Smyrna, and we're going to kind of compare how it lines up with, um, you know, the second seal and the second sign in all of the discourse. So we're going to jump right into this, and I'll try to keep it 15, 20 minutes, and we'll see where we can go. Get at least one church done, maybe two, but we'll shoot for at least one. And uh, there's so much to get out of this. So I'll say a quick word of prayer and we'll get started. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for allowing us to get into your word and study your word. And we thank you that you've told us what's going to happen before it happens. You're worthy of all the praise. We give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's get into it. We are in chapter 2, verse 12. Starting with the church, uh, this is dealing with the church of Smyrna, not verse 12, I apologize, verse 8. Chapter 2, verse 8 of Revelation, and dealing with the message to the church of Smyrna. Here we go. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Talking about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He was dead. He, he was crucified. Um, he was buried. And the scripture says he was cut off. If you read in, in um, Daniel chapter 9, it talks about he, how he was cut off. He wasn't cut off for himself, but he was cut off for you and I 
to take care of that sin debt that we could um, you know be forgiven of our sins and live forever in eternal glory so he was cut off not for himself he didn't need to do that for himself but he did it so we could be forgiven and escape that eternal death sentence which we have deserved we've earned as sinners and we could um, gain the gift of eternal life so he was dead okay and is alive he was the first fruits uh, he was resurrected already so that's what it means he's alive and he's alive forevermore he he died he was buried he resurrected and he he ascended into heaven where he's seated at the right hand of God right now of his father and he's waiting for God to say you know to go get the bride so his father so he was dead and he is alive okay verse 9 I know thy works and tribulation so remember we are um, there's positive feedback and there's negative feedback and the church of Smyrna I just see positive feedback in there and this church was really going through um, some tribulation and uh, there was poverty as we're going to read about but you can see the parallel with this church and seal 2 and the second sign so verse 9 says I know thy works and tribulation this is all positive feedback and poverty but thou art rich in parentheses it says but thou art rich see they may be poor um, they may have been going through things poverty and the natural and the physical but spiritually they're rich um, they're spiritually they're on their way to heaven they're born again their names have been written in the book of life so you can be you know you can be Poor as dirt Joe, I think that's how they say it, just poor as can be down here. You might not have a whole lot to your name, but if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're a born-again believer, you are rich. You are, when you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are richer than the all the riches here on earth. You're richer than anybody here that has all the money in the world and they can have anything they want if you know Jesus you can be you can have all the money and riches in the world but if you don't know Jesus you're dirt poor but if you know Jesus see you can have nothing here in the physical you know possessions you can have none of that but if you know Jesus you are spiritually rich and you're on your way to heaven and don't get no better than that you can have peace joy happiness um, and you can just be happy every day when you know Jesus so you may be poor here they had a lot of poverty in this church but spiritually they're rich because they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan we talked about in the first church um, and it's still continuing on here in the second church you see deception major deception lies they say they're of God they say they're um, followers of Christ but they're not they're liars they're they're of their the father of the devil it says they're of the synagogue of Satan fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the, saith unto the churches. He that overcometh, there's that word overcometh again, shall not be hurt of the second death. The second death is hell and lake of fire. If you're born again, you won't have to go through that. But if you're not born again and you don't know Jesus, your name's not written in the book of life, you're going to um, suffer that eternal separation from God, that eternal punishment, which is, hell and lake of fire for all eternity um, it's a scary thing amen but when you read this it says be thou faithful unto death so you see they're being put to death here um, you see tribulation they're really they're going through it and and you see death they're being put to death but he says this be be thou faithful unto death even if they put you to death you know if you're saved See, the Bible says um, 
not to fear man. Fear not the one that can kill the body and not the soul. Don't fear man. Don't fear what man can do. Man can only kill the body, kill the flesh. But it says, fear him which is able to kill both body and soul into hell. Fear the one that can kill you, can take your life from you, and can also cast your soul into hell for all eternity. Don't worry about man. Don't fear what man can do. You know, all they can do, they can kill the body that, that they can't. They have no say-so where the soul goes. Um, fear God. The scripture says the beginning of fear is wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So we love God, but we, it's also a fearful thing when you think about it. He's the one, he's the creator of the whole universe. He has the ability to determine whether you live or die. And, and you know, he has the keys to death and hell. So, but Thank God for the plan of salvation. Thank God he loved us so much that, you know, he sent his son into the world to die for the sins of all mankind. And through faith and trust in him, he made this thing so easy. Believe on Jesus and trust in him as your Lord and Savior, and you'll gain the gift of eternal life. If we reject such a plan of salvation, the work has been done. All we have to do is believe and trust in him as our Lord and Savior. And we'll be saved, we'll be born again, we'll gain the gift of eternal life, and we'll escape that death sentence. But you see, you see, so you see um, tribulation, you see poverty, you see um, them being imprisoned, and you see them put, being put to death uh, for their faith. Um, but he says this, if you overcome, see, during the tribulation period, I read this in tw Revelations 12. It says that 12 and 10 of Revelations, I'll read it real fast. It's a, a key word, overcometh. It tells us how we overcome in the book of Revelation. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony, and we love not our lives even unto the death. That is Revelations chapter 12. Let's read this really fast. 12 and, 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto the death. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome Satan, death, and hell by the blood of the Lamb. It's our testimony and our faith in Jesus Christ, our trust in him. But during this time period, a lot of saints are going to be martyred for their faith. So... They love not their lives, even unto the death. So even if you have to give your life for your testimony, in the end, you're going to live forever and you'll gain the gift of eternal life. So no matter what, you're going to win. Um, you know, don't fear what man can do to you. Man can't take your soul and cast it into hell. Man can kill the body. But God has the ability. He's the one to fear. And God is the one, um, you know, that we can be saved through what Jesus did for us, Satan only has so much power, he can't take our salvation. Amen. So, okay, so let's wrap this thing up here. Um, so when you compare church number two, when you look at seal number two, you see the rider on the red horse. If you read over in chapter six of Revelations, verse three, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. This is verse 4. And, had pow and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they, should be, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So you see peace being taken from the earth, and you see death. And you see that in, in um, church number two, the, the church of Smyrna. When you go over to Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse, you see the same thing, the second sign. You see in 24 and 4, it says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's the first sign, deception. Um, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And then sign number two, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So you see war, you see rumors of wars. And it says how they'll, they'll kill you for your testimony's sake. 
Um, verse 9, then, then shall they deliver you up in, to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Our testimony is in Jesus Christ. Um, he is our Lord and Savior. And there's coming a time where they're going to hate those that have the testimony of Jesus and you and you um, claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So, you know, we can see here by the church to Smyrna, there was nothing bad. Um, they were actually suffering persecution and tribulation, and they were even being put to death. But they didn't. Um, they did. They confessed the name of Jesus. They didn't. They didn't. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? They didn't lose their faith in Jesus. I want to find this here let's see i know thy works in tribulation and poverty and i know the blasphemy the blasphemy of them which say they are jews there's the deception of the false disciples and are not but are the synagogue of satan fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt, and shall not be hurt of the second death. So, how does this apply to us? Um, if we are here during that seven-year period, we must prepare spiritually. We must be prepared for what's coming. We must be prepared even to the point. The ultimate way for me, the ultimate way to be prepared is to be willing to give your life for Jesus, for your testimony. It happens all the time. People in other countries, they give their life for their testimony every day. They don't know if they're going to live to see another minute because they of their testimony. And it's going to be the same way during this time period, except for it's going to be way worse. Midway through the tribulation period, um, Satan's going to be cast out of heaven in a war. He'll be tossed out of heaven. He's going to possess the Antichrist. At that point, the Antichrist will be possessed. He'll stand in the temple of God, claim to be God, demand all to worship him. If you don't take the mark of the beast, you'll be killed. If you don't, um, you know, you won't be able to buy or sell, and you'll be killed. A lot of, a lot of saints are going to be martyred for their faith. So the ultimate way to prepare for me um, is spiritually and mentally you must come to the point where you say, even if I give, have to give my life for my faith in Jesus Christ, for my testimony, I'm willing to do it. Because it could come down to that. And Jesus said, if you, den if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. But if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. So no matter what we go through, if it comes down to that, which it could, um... And you could go through this even if this isn't the tribulation period. You know, this situation could happen to, to any country at any given time. And when you have an anti-God country, and believe me, the United States is going that route fast. When you decide that you don't want to include God in everything you do, um, it's a bad thing. You don't, you don't ever want to get to that point, and unfortunately, if this country is, is going there, the stuff you see going on, God is not happy with it. And if we're not being judged already, we will be judged. So, you know, we must prepare, but in the end, God is good. He's worthy to be praised no matter what you go through. Um, just know in the end, whether you... Whether you give your life as a martyr, if you read chapter 14, when we get there, it says, blessed is he who dies and from henceforth out. So, because we'll, we're going to, we're going to, like it says here, be thou faithful unto death, if you have to do that, and I will give thee a crown of life. We have a crown of righteousness awaiting us, and however we get there, whether we die physically or we go in the rapture, everybody wants to go in the rapture. Um, if there's a pre-trib rapture, thank God, hallelujah, that would be awesome.
but you don't prepare for that. You prepare as if you're going to have to be here to go through the tough times, even to the point where you're persecuted for your faith. Um, so we want to be prepared. Uh, it's time to make sure that you're right with God. Make sure you're doing everything to live for the Lord. And stay connected to the vine. Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. If we stay connected to the vine, the fruit will grow. And we can let our light shine and we can be a witness to the world. Daniel. I read this scripture really fast. Daniel 12. And I'll be, I'm done. Okay, we made it through one more church. All right. Not bad. I was hoping a little more, but I don't want to do super long videos. I don't want you guys to get sick of it. So anyway, let's go Daniel 12. I just want to read this really fast. Proverbs, Ezekiel, see Ezekiel, where are you at? Isaiah. There we go. Sorry about this. Daniel 12. I just want to share this really fast. And I believe this is talking about those that know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Those that are strong in the Lord. Those that are connected to the vine. It says this. I'll read 12, 1 through 5 because it's dealing with the... Uh, when Satan's cast out of heaven, it says this in verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. This is Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period, but this is during the great tribulation period, midway through. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. That's the book of life. And thy people, speaking of the Jews, but I, I believe this includes um, the whole church because everyone that shall be found written in the book of life. That's all the believers in Christ that are in the book of life. Verse 2, and many of them that sleep in the dust, here's the rapture, the resurrection and rapture, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, and they that be wise, see, we want to be among the wise. We want to study. We want to know what's going on at this time. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. When you think about that, I heard this before, and this could mean be what it means. Now, we know we're going to get our glorious bodies just like Jesus. And when we get our glorious bodies, is this a picture of us, how we're going to shine in our glory? Verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. That could be when we have our glorious bodies after we get resurrected. And they that turn many to righteousness, so those that turn many to righteousness, those that lead people to Christ, as the stars forever and ever. That could be our glorious bodies shining forever and ever. We're going to be with the Lord forever and ever. So God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Um, thank God for another study. I hope somebody got something out of it. I enjoy studying the Bible and especially in time prophecy because I believe we're right there. And the soon return of our Lord and Savior, it's coming. That final seven, period, seven years, I believe, is right around the corner if we aren't going into it right about now. Um, we're close. So keep fighting the good fight of faith. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbors yourself. And just keep striving and keep, um, you know, sharing the good news message of Jesus Christ with as many, many people as possible whenever you have an opportunity. Um, it's the death, burial, and resurrection because of his death. Because of that blood sacrifice, we can be forgiven of our, of our sins. And because of the resurrection, we can live forever in eternal glory. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful day or a wonderful evening. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. I'll see you next time. God bless.